time to sit there. You know, I had to start making my plans and reservations, the itinerary to head to Washington and get in, um, you know, make those connections with the guys back in Chicago real quick. And then, uh, you know, change that energy and, and all that positive energy towards DC now. I understand, uh, you know, you've been working your way towards a return, but just where are you conditioning wise right now? Um, obviously having, having had not played in a, a little while. Yeah. I mean, my conditioning is, is great right now. Although I wasn't participating in games, uh, now I was working out multiple times a day, strength training three times a week. Um, you know, just using a lot of that time to make sure I stayed in shape because whenever I, you know, that point in time came where I was going to return, I made sure that my body was going to be able to be ready. So there was a just quick transition and I didn't have to make up anything from that moment on. So my conditioning right now is, is off the charts. I feel great. Chris Miller. Chandler, welcome to town. Are you expected uh, to play tonight? Um, I had a conversation with, uh, with Coach Brooks and, you know, we just decided that since for me, the plan to get back out here was to participate in a practice first or in a practice type environment, um, that that was what we were going to continue to do. Even though, you know, now I'm in a new spot, it was still to get a practice at Chicago. So I'm going to plan on getting in a practice here tomorrow and then um, let it rip from there. See how I feel, have another conversation with uh, Coach Brooks and then move from there. So uh, although I am eager and, and fired up, I think, we, you know, I decided that it was best that I just stick with my plan and not to play tonight and then, uh, you know, practice tomorrow and then go from there. Best of luck to you. Welcome to town. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Chandler. Um, welcome. Was just wondering what you feel like you bring the Wizards. Um, a whole lot. A whole lot. Um, you know, a player like me, and, and I know what I'm capable of doing, the athleticism, the ability to guard the other team's best player, you know, on the perimeter, one through four, even five, small ball. Uh, I pride myself defensively, especially, you know, I play extremely hard and I use my length and, and, and I play passing lanes. And, you know, that's something that uh, uh, Tommy Shepard had mentioned to me is something that was very vital and what he saw in me when he brought me in here. Uh, defensively, they need a guy. And I know I can be that, be that type of person, type of player, but also offensively, you know, I think, I think I'm an extremely underrated player offensively. I think with my last couple years in the league opportunities mixed with injuries and just setbacks in general I wasn't able to be my full self um, offensively and I think there's a lot for me to look forward to in this system an opportunity for me to show my athleticism running the floor you know playing along guys uh, you know great players like like Brad Beal and Russ that like to play uh, fast especially Russ getting it out and going and me being able to you know get out ahead of the pack and finish in transition use my athleticism and you know, just be real versatile on the offensive, uh, offensive side as well. So I'm excited, you know, and I'm excited to get out there and show just what I can do. And do you, do you have relationships with any guys on, on the Wizards already that goes beyond the normal, just, you know, haven't played against them? Um, so Rolo was my vet in Chicago, my rookie year. So we have that connection, played with him, um, you know. So I was looking forward to that once I heard the news. Um, and me and Jerome were the same draft class, some of the older guys in the green room. So we chopped it up a little bit, got to know each other. Not a great, you know, relationship, but still familiar with each other. And then, uh, you know, Brad Bill is actually part of my agency. You know, we're both represented by Mark Bartleson. And um, it doesn't really go further than that, but I'm sure that will be a, a key piece in our relationship moving forward. Neil. Hey Chandler, welcome to DC. We saw that you were able to talk to Russ a little bit yesterday. Um, I'm just curious what he was, you know, expressing to you about maybe what your role will be here. Yeah, we didn't really get into a role definition right away. It was more of an introduction. You know, he was just wanted to take some time to introduce himself, um, and you know, for us to kind of just introduce ourselves. And then he just he just mentioned that you know, in the midst of all this, that that we're going to figure it out, and he's glad to have us aboard. You know, and I just, I just reassured him that he, he definitely got some good ones in me and Gaff that are excited. We bring a lot of energy, a lot of uh, athleticism, you know, that Russ can relate to. Guys like him that can get up on the floor, you know, finish head above the rim and things like that. So nothing, no, no in-depth conversations, but just, uh, you know, some brief uh, introduction and just uh, excited to move forward. 
Christos. Hello, Chandler. Hope you are doing well. What kind of luxury for you to have uh, two gifted uh, teammates like Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook in I'm your sorry. shrine? I'm sorry. Someone was talking in the back. Can you repeat that? Yeah, you hear me now? Yes, all good. Okay. I would like to ask you, what kind of luxury for you is to have uh, two gifted teammates like Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook in the team? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had, I've had some, some great teammates, you know, in Chicago. Guys that have come in and left and, and all of the relationships I've valued especially playing with someone um, as a leader is a guy like Zach Levine, who was fortunate enough to make the all-star and was deserving in that. But, you know, you come here now and, and you've got an MVP uh, of the league that you can kind of learn for, you know, at the head of the snake. And then uh, a perennial all-star, two perennial all-stars, but another perennial all-star in, in Brad Beal, who, um, you know, is just well known around the league for his leadership qualities and the type of person he is. Um, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting. And, and the list goes beyond this, just them two, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of what is going on here and what I've been communicating with, you know, Tommy Shepard and Scott Brooks of the plan and the energy with the coaching staff here. You know, it's, it's just made everything for me just a smooth transition and to just continue my excitement, you know, like this, this emo the emotions that I have going towards being here, you know, mentally being in a place where I haven't been here at this part, you know, in peak physicality and mentally of my whole career, you know, so it's just a bunch of momentum for me um, and I'm excited. And what is your main expectation about uh, the rest of the season? Um, can you say that one more time? Yeah, what is the main, your main expectation with the Wizards oh, for the rest um, of the season? I've got no expectations, you know. One thing that got me here was to, uh, to not expect anything, you know, for me. I'm coming in here and, and, I, and I'm the knowledge of understanding that, you know, I've only played seven games this year, you know, and I'm going to have to work my way up from the bottom. And that's my, been my mindset and part of the reason that got me to the NBA, you know. Um, being from Boise State, I've always had a chip on my sho shoulder that I've had to prove myself. You know, first round picks coming out of uh, the Mountain West Conference, especially Boise State, doesn't happen, but it happened for a reason. And that's because of my mindset. And I continue to carry that with me. So nothing's going to change me coming here. You know, I'm going to start from the bottom, build these relationships, start with my work ethic, uh, you know, my, my morals of continuing to come in here to be coachable, um, you know, to have that responsibility and whatever responsibility I'm given to just try to embrace it and do it to the best of my ability. So no expectations. You know, I'm humbled and blessed to be here. This, I see this as a new beginning, something that's really exciting for me that I'm going to take full advantage of whatever opportunity I'm given. All right, we got time for a couple more here. Uh, Ava. Hey Chandler, nice to meet you. Um, nice to hear that your conditioning is, is good and everything. Um, just wondering what this year in general has been like with you. Obviously we, we aren't sure why the playing time has gaps in it or anything. This year's, year's been weird for everybody. I'm just kind of interested to hear what your perspective is on that. Yeah, I mean, it's been a roller coaster of a year. Um, you know, from coming down with COVID in the beginning of the season to that being a setback, and then um, kind of getting acclimated again and having to catch up. And then obviously me making the decision to um, step away from the basketball, you know, the game side of it for a little bit to take care of some personal reasons. And for me, um, you know, that's something that I'm gonna address, you know, when the time is right for me. Um, with this transition, my main priority is to make sure that I'm good and I'm ready to go. And then, um, you know, when the time is right to express, you know, what I want to about the time that I'm, that I've missed, it'll happen, you know, and fill in those, I'll be more than happy to answer questions about all that stuff. But it was away from basketball, you know, it wasn't basketball related. And the biggest thing for me while the time that I've been out was, it wasn't a break for me. I was working just as hard or if not harder than any of the guys in the gym when I was in Chicago. Getting there early, staying there late, lifting three times, three, four times a week, making sure that my body was ready, that when my, you know, the, the mental side of it caught up, that I was going to be ready to go. And now everything's just coming together and, and I'm excited for these next, you know, this next step in these next couple of days to really lock in and, and be able to attack this opportunity. Awesome, glad you're doing so well. Um, and you spoke about just what you've kind of spoken about with Tommy Shepard and Scott Brooks, you said just kind of where this organization is headed. In terms of their long-term plans, just what they've shared with you, what kind of excites you about this organization or where do you feel like you might uh, fit into those long-term plans that they have said? 
Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what you said was is the fit, you know, with the my ability and my athleticism defensively was an immediate need, you know. So when you hear something um, that a team needs right away and you know you're capable of doing that, then automatically, you know, that's just positive energy and momentum. And for me, I want to accept any challenge they have for me at that role. And then, you know, moving on towards the other things that maybe I'm working on or that I haven't shown yet, you know, that's also there too. So for me to be able to know that what I can hang my hat on is something that they're looking for, you know, that's just, like I said, it's all positive energy just towards making this transition easy. And for me, something to focus on right away, you know, to not get caught in the role and this and that, you know, if they need a guy defensively to come in and lock up and help them with length and athleticism, I'm the guy. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Chandler. All right, we'll finish up with Darnell. Hey, Chandler, good to see you, man. What's up, man? Good to see a familiar face. I know. I uh, It's been a while since we talked to you here in Chicago. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. My my uh, my, my main question is, did you have any idea that, that this was coming? Did you did you get a sense that the Bulls were interested in, in making a deal for you? And, and did you know Washington was going to be the location? No, I had no idea. You know, uh, I, I, to my close ones that I talked to that, that morning, they're like, did you know, da, 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 like what? I said, no, I woke up that morning, I had breakfast and I plan on coming to the gym, getting COVID tested and then getting up some jumpers, you know, and, and, and uh, participating. That, been, that was an off day, but participating in practice the following day. Um, you know, and then getting to a place where I would be playing again. And then I get a call from my agent, um, obviously with the news and everything. And so you change, you flip the page, you mentally you take it in a little bit, um, you take a second, but then you move, you move forward and, and you look at the opportunity ahead. And, and you know, um, I had no inclination of anything where I was going until I heard where I was going. So, um, you know, it all come, kind of comes at once and you got to take it all, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving with it in stride and trying to adjust. And, and one quick follow-up, Chandler. I want to respect your privacy to an answer you just gave before, uh, but at the same time, have you decided on in what form you will address the absence? Have you have you settled on a way that you want to communicate that yet? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't pinned it down uh, to a specific outlet. Um, you know, just with all this stuff going on, it's important for me to prioritize that, and then. Um, you know, like that wasn't my priority in these times when I was out. It was about it was about handling my business. And right now, I, there's a little bit more business for me to handle before I get to that step. But um, you can take it as you'll you'll know you'll know uh, you'll have your answers. You know, when I feel like the time is right, I promise you that. Don't know. <laughs> All right. Good luck, man. I hope you Thanks. will. Thanks, bro. Just wondering what these uh, last couple of days have been like for you, and if you had any idea that anything was was coming on the trade front oh last couple of days have been you know a bit of a grind um which comes to show but uh, i mean i really didn't have any idea that you know i was going to be traded you know he came out of nowhere basically but i mean that's the main thing with the nba today i mean you never you never know when you know your last day is going to be with a team or not so i mean i was prepared for it um you know i just always stay working and once i got to washington i mean that's the main thing i did i got back in the gym and just prepare to be ready to come out tonight. See, hopefully, um, you know, we come out and we get a win against the short tonight. Ava. Hey, Daniel, nice to meet you. Um, just wondering where you feel like you kind of fit in on this team and, and what you feel like you can bring to the organization. Um, For sure, a lot of threat. You know, I come out and I play with a lot of energy and whatnot. I'm going to be the guy that's, you know, the dominant role guy, come out and set pick and rolls for all our point guards, get everybody open. And just, you know, try to be the spark for the team to basically give everybody the energy that's coming off the bench or the guys that are starting, you know. I'm, I always try to, you know, lift guys up. I always try to be, like, motivating, certain things like that. So I just try to come in and just be that one guy to just be a great teammate to everybody else on the floor. And when you're coming into a team like like Washington that's, you know, fighting for a playoff spot, uh, got a lot of work to do, what does that kind of – do from your perspective? Does, you feel like it gives you a chance to prove something, give you a chance to really come in and impact straight away? Um, I mean, I just come and I'm ready to work. Just come and have a lot of energy. Just come just be that one teammate that everybody is always like, okay, yeah, he's come in and he's ready to play. Um, I mean, we're trying to make a playoff push for sure. So, you know, I'm just going to come in and do the things that I have to do to be able to help the team out for that. Chris Miller. Hey, Daniel, welcome to town. Uh, 
what was it about the Wizards this season where you've had some of your better games? I mean, was was Brad talking to you or something like you, you were you were dunking and doing some real interesting stuff out there? Um, the first time I played against him this year, I mean, it was just me coming off the bench. I wasn't really, I would say, getting playing time like I thought I was going to be. But I mean, we had a couple of injuries on the teams that uh, put me in a position to where I was able to play. And the guys, coaches and stuff, they told me to just come out and play my game. And so that's what I did. I went out there and I just basically dunked the ball as much as I could. <laughs> but I mean, other than that, you know, Brad, he always, you know, you can talk smack. So Brad, is he's a great player and stuff, and he's always going to do that. So it really gets me going and stuff when somebody talks trash to me. All right. There was a moment, and I think it was in that first game, might have been in the second one, where you kicked the chair. Did you ever apologize to that chair? And yeah, yeah, what did that was, chair do to you that night? I think they uh I think they got when I kicked and I don't think they got when I went over and like dapped the chair up and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatnot. But um, it was just I was just frustrated because I got in foul trouble early. It was, it was a real good game for me. I felt like, you know, I was shooting, I shot a jumper that game. It was my first jumper I ever shot in like NBA game and I made it. So I mean, you know, it was felt like a real good night for me, but it was just like a lot of frustration from off the court that came onto the court and it kind of like channeled a lot of negative energy that came out of me that night. So yeah, I apologize to the chair for sure. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I didn't break it. They probably took it out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw real quick you you were in the marching band in high school. What instrument did you play? In March and season I played the bass drum. I played three different variations of the clarinet when I was, you know, in the room with everybody else. My oh, man, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Chase. Hey, Daniel, welcome to DC. Um, I'm just wondering, um, what, what do you think about just the opportunity to get a fresh start, you know, first time in your career where you're changing teams and, and you can kind of start anew? Um, I mean, it just really just feels like, you know how you take a shower and you're relieved after you, you're about to get ready to lay down and stuff? It's that feeling, you know? You're um, about to wake up to another day and have a better opportunity for another door that's open for you. So my main thing is just to make the best of it and not take it for granted because, I mean, you know, like you said, this is a, uh, another start for me. And I mean, I just really can't wait for it. I'm really excited. I'm holding in a lot of emotions right now. <laughs> but um, other than that, you know, I'm just ready to come play. You know, like you said, it's a new start for me. It's a new open door for my career. And I just can't wait to uh, get it started. And, uh, you know, they've raved about your defense and, uh, you know, the shot blocking numbers are impressive. Um, at, at this point in your career, what are you trying to do to kind of continue to hone that skill in particular, your, your shot blocking? Uh, just really remain consistent. I mean, you know, uh, I try to have a defensive mindset at first and then offense second because sometimes defense can't lead to offense. So I just try to put as much energy as I can down there, down low for sure. And I mean, you know, it's a lot of big guys down there that I have to defend. And at the same time, I'm trying to help guards out too when they're, you know, if they get broken down and they get blown by and guys are attacking the basket and stuff, I got to protect home. That's my main thing. Protecting home is one of the big things for me and protecting the basket is something that I'm always going to try to do. If I get dunked on, I get dunked on. If I don't, I don't. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to play my ass off on defense. Hey, Daniel, welcome to DC. I play the clarinet too, so that's <laughs> cool. Um, I saw that you were able to talk to Russ yesterday. I'm curious just what he expressed to you in that, you know, first introductory conversation. Um, I mean, you know, he was just he was just welcoming me to the team, me and Hutch. Um, you know, because we were both there, we were watching, we were watching practice. We got introduced to the team, and everybody, we got to shake everybody's hand. And he just pulled us to the side and just told us just to be ready. I mean, it's gonna be, you know, we're trying to make a playoff push, and having us two on the team now is gonna really help, uh, really help us, you know, be able to be in that position to make that run. Christos. Hello, Daniel. Hope you are doing well. From uh, Zach Lavin with Chicago Bulls, now we have Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook, two gifted playmakers as a teammates. How's that feeling for you and how excited you are to take the ball from them and make some dunks or make some uh, lobs? I mean, I'm, I'm excited, you know. <laughs> it's always exciting for me because, you know, I <laughs> getting lobs and stuff thrown to me is always like the main thing that really gets me juice and stuff, you know. Just like helping my helping my teammate out get open, and then at the same time being rewarded for helping him get open is like a real big thing for me. So I mean, I just can't wait for it. And the follow up: What result will make you satisfied at the end of the season with the Wizards? Say that one more time. What result will make you satisfied with the Wizards this season? Oh, I mean, just being you know in the position to either have a play-in game or be in the position to be like you know solidified in the playoffs for sure.
because, I mean, everybody on this team, you know, we have a good team here for Washington, and we all want to, you know, be playing uh, beyond May for sure, though. No, you know, so that's our main focus from what Russ told me yesterday and from, like, the things that I heard at practice and stuff um, yesterday and stuff like that. That's just the main focus is trying to make a playoff run, either be in the play-in game or just be in the playoffs in general.